After an explosive reveal and months of excitement from the community, Command & Conquer Remastered has finally been released. It's available for purchase right now on Steam and Origin, as well as a limited run physical collection starting at a price of 20 US dollars. The Command & Conquer Remastered collection promises to bring the original two games of the Command & Conquer series, Tiberian Dawn and Red Alert, as well as all of their expansions and bonus content up to modern standards with recreated graphics and sound, as well as a laundry list of technical improvements. It's been developed by Petroglyph Games with help from Lemon Sky Studios, and it's been published by Electronic Arts. The original 1995 and 1996 releases were created by the late Westwood Studios, and for those unaware, Petroglyph was founded in the years after the former's demise by many of its key staff members. That means there's a number of people who worked on the remaster who were involved in those original games' development, and undoubtedly helped to keep the remaster as authentic as possible. As you might have expected though, there was however a lot of cautious optimism surrounding it, as it is of course being published by franchise owner Allotronic Arts, which, as I'm sure you're aware, haven't had the greatest track record in upholding their legacy of Command and Conquer in the past 10 years. However, the last few years have shown EA in more of a positive light, and it seems like they might really be taking people's feedback on board in regards to microtransactions, broken and buggy releases, and desecration of beloved franchises. There's a long road ahead of them for sure, and that's especially true for fans of Command and Conquer. But some quality remasters are a good place to start. So let's see if the release of Command & Conquer Remastered has started them off on the right foot. As with many remasters, the most obvious, though not always the most significant changes to the game are the graphics, sound effects and soundtrack. And in the case of what we have here today, those probably make up around two thirds of what's been recreated for this release. Let's start with the obvious, the graphics. Everything has been remade in crispy 4K resolution, and the difference is staggeringly obvious. It looks great and retains the personality and art style from the originals to really good effect. When you're playing in single player there's even a button to swap between the old and new visuals, which is an excellent way to showcase the really stark difference between the two. Visual effects have obviously seen an overhaul as well, and they look really nice and fit into the overall aesthetic well. In particular, I thought the nuclear strikes looked pretty great, as well as tank projectiles and things of that nature. My favourite visual upgrade might be the building animations though, something that CNC has been known for since it was first seen back in 1995 with the original release of Tiberian Dawn. These have all been remade and reanimated and damn, they look awesome. As a side note, there are little things you'll notice throughout the game which have been remade as well and they all look really excellent. The mission selection screen from Tiberian Dawn is a particular standout for me, but others like the really cool startup sequence for both games as well as the mission completion screens also look pretty darn good. Something else that CNC has been known for is, of course, its full motion video cutscenes, and these have seen a pretty significant upgrade. While they are the same video from the originals, they've been massively improved, and not just by simply scaling them up to 4K, which would obviously look pretty bad. Special AI software has been used to boost the resolution, and the results are pretty staggering. It's of course not perfect, but it is darn impressive. However, these unfortunately only really work for the FMV cutscenes, and not the fully 3D ones. Honestly, I'm not even sure they've up those ones, because they look like they're just upscaled from the originals. To be honest, I would have liked to have seen these 3D cutscenes fully remade, but I get that that's a lot of work. It can just be kind of jarring when you're playing the game and swapping between these 3D ones and the FMV cutscenes. It just kind of looks a bit out of place and definitely reminds you you're playing a game that was originally released in 1995. While the graphics are impressive, I think the audio has to be the most significant part of this remaster. The game's already a good deal at 20 US dollars, but even if this release was only the reworked soundtrack, with no game included at all, I think it would be worth the asking price. It's just that good. Not only have all the original tracks been remastered, there's also new bonus ones, as well as a ton from the Tiberian Sons, who have done an excellent job with their contributions. These songs are some of my favourites from the entire thing. You're hearing one right now, in fact. 
Obviously Frank Klopacki has also returned to work on this, and the work he's done is really impressive to say the least. I was actually lucky enough to spend an hour talking to him recently about his work here. There's a link in the description if you'd like to watch that interview. The upgraded jukebox is also a great inclusion, as it allows you to make custom playlists from the entire collection of nearly 200 songs across both games. And these lists sync between games too, which is a nice quality of life feature. One thing I do wish was included was the ability to quickly see what song is currently playing, rather than having to dig into the audio settings. But that's a small complaint, it's nice it's there to begin with. And to be fair, it's easy to overlook those when everything else is so great. The last thing I wanted to cover presentation wise is the bonus gallery, which I think is one of the game's best inclusions. It's a massive list of behind the scenes material from the original productions of both games, and I think it's really going to be appreciated by longtime fans of the series. These unlock as you progress through the game's campaigns, and range from audio demo tracks to original cutscene takes to photos of unique memorabilia. It's seriously awesome. It's a great idea that the developers didn't have to include, but it's something I really appreciate them doing. It shows the love they have for their source material, and it's an interesting time capsule of game development from 25 years ago. I know I'm personally going to spend a lot of time unlocking every single one of these. I really do love stuff like this, and I'm sure a lot of you out there do as well. As for content, everything that's been released for Timebear and Dawn and Red Alert is included here in Command & Conquer Remastered. Campaigns, skirmish, multiplayer, expansions, console only missions, everything. Gameplay aside, it's great to have everything here in one place, as I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who were unable for one reason or another to play it all throughout the years. And although I do have some issues with the gameplay, which we'll talk about in a second, the pure value proposition from the amount of content available is certainly not one of them. While the visuals and sound obviously have received a massive overhaul, the gameplay of both Tiberian Dawn and Red Alert has remained relatively unchanged here, which depending on who you ask is possibly a good or a bad thing. On the one hand, it's extremely authentic, and it plays just as you remember it did from 25 or so years ago. But on the other hand, it does show its age, and it could be difficult for someone who's never played it to get into it today. There are things that have been updated however, but they're more quality of life and technical improvements. We will get to those, but let's start with the general gameplay. Like I said, it's basically unchanged, and like the title of this review suggests, it's authentic to a fault. There are things that have been in RTS games for ages that are missing here, like being able to set a rally point for buildings, or the ability to attack move units or set waypoints. There's also problems like the unit pathfinding, which to be frank is pretty atrocious, and it's a constant battle you'll be facing pretty much whenever you're playing. Enemy AI can also be kind of dumb, there's been more than a few times where I've encountered them selling all their buildings near the end of a match to get troops to be able to fend off my attacks, only to lose the game because the victory condition was destroy all structures. If you've played these games before, then a lot of the stuff may be nothing new to you, but like I said earlier, it might make things difficult for players who have never played this to get into, or particularly players who started with later Command & Conquer games like Tiberian Sun or Generals. And while I'm on the subject, there are a few things that the remaster does which I'm not a big fan of personally. The first is to do with multiplayer. Of course the added ability to actually play multiplayer, as well as the associated options that come with it, is great, and being able to join friends through Steam and just play a battle with other people in seconds is really welcome. But the whole system does come off rather simplistic. For example, when you host a multiplayer game, as far as I can tell there's no way to lock a lobby or set a password. So if you want to play just with your friends, you'll have to kick other people joining until your buddy can come and fill the slot. Another thing is that while there are a lot of maps, they are locked to each game. And this is the most apparent in Tiberian Dawn, as all the maps available are 4 player maps, while Red Alert has 2, 4, 6, etc. There is the ability to load custom maps through the Steam Workshop though, so hopefully that will fill out the map roster as time goes on. And it's possible that some of these gameplay issues will be able to be fixed with mods. EA have said they're going to be releasing the entire source code for the game, so like I said, some of these things may be ironed out through community fixes in the future. 
Speaking of multiplayer, I also encountered some connection issues while playing, as well as delays of half a second or so when performing actions, like whenever I would select or move a unit. Hopefully this can be put down to launch week issues, and ideally it'll be sorted in the coming days. There has already been a post about it from EA outlining some connection issues, so I can hope that those will be fixed pretty soon. Now I know that was a lot of negatives, but I don't want it to seem like I didn't enjoy playing the game. I did. Actually I really did. These just stand out because the presentation side of the game is so excellent. It was just more apparent with these things on the gameplay side when they weren't at the same level. And that's not by any fault of the developers, they never said gameplay was going to receive a huge retooling like the graphics and sound were, it's just what I felt when I was playing it. And that's not to say there aren't improvements to the gameplay, because there absolutely are. The updated UI is a godsend, and it goes a long way to making the moment to moment experience feel much more modern than it has any right to. And I'm sure the hardcore crowd will appreciate the hotkeys assigned to each building and unit in the sidebar. I also certainly appreciate the extra detail added when you're hovering over a unit or a building, the lack of which I always bring up when reviewing older Command & Conquer games. Look, despite the lack of modernization to the core gameplay, it's still a blast. I just want you to know what you're getting into. This plays like a 25 year old RTS that's had a couple of welcome quality of life passes done to it, not a complete reimagining that's made for a modern day audience who have never played RTSs before. If you're a fan of real time strategy in general, I'd guess you'll still have a good time. And if you've been playing games in the genre for as long as I have, or if you've specifically played these games in the past, I think you'll be able to look over its shortcomings pretty easily and appreciate it all the same. Commander Conquer Remastered is everything I wanted it to be, and I'm so happy to be able to say that. The graphics look great and the soundtrack is perfection. Like I said, in my opinion, that alone is worth the price of admission. And despite some issues I have with the gameplay, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't true to the original. It may be difficult for those who have never played it to get into nowadays, but for everyone else, or those who are willing to overlook it, I guarantee you, you're in for a good time. And a heck of a nostalgia trip at that. After the horrendous, well, everything of Warcraft 3 Reforged, I was concerned that EA would find a way to mess this up, and doom Command & Conquer to another decade of irrelevancy, aside from the dedicated community base that have kept the dream alive up until now. But here we have a very well received release with a peak player count on Steam that was over 40,000 people when it came out. And it's well deserved, the team at Petroglyph, Lemon Sky and EA have done an excellent job. The game is as authentic as it possibly could be, and it really does feel like a love letter to the original releases, and as a whole, the Command & Conquer franchise. The level of detail put into this is impressive, and seeing the Westwood logo rendered in 4K in the opening screen brings a tear to my eye. EA, nice job, you did good. Petroglyph, you've honoured the original game and Westwood Studios with the quality of this remaster, and I really hope to see everyone back at it for Tiberian Sun and Red Alert 2 sometime soon. And hey, maybe even a brand new Command & Conquer game. With the success they've seen here, I think it's less of a pipe dream than some of you might think. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in picking up Command & Conquer Remastered, then there are links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, I'd encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more from me in the future. I'm currently working on a review of Red Alert 2 and I'll continue to cover Command & Conquer as well as a range of other RTS games and series in the future. Thanks again, and I will see you all next time.